Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I have cried to you all day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today of the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, my giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture us in what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me. You are the stronger. I am a daily laughingstock, everybody's butt. Each time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name anymore. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The Word of the Lord. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life, my lips will speak your praise. 
So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him, I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of your mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to make it clear to the disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and when he does, he will reward each one according to his behaviour. The Gospel of the Lord. I know today is the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, but it's also the Feast of St. Margaret Clitheroe. And as you know, she's the patron saint of the UCM, that's the Union of Catholic Mothers. Now, when the 30-year-old Margaret, the butcher's wife from York, was taken to court in 1586, Accused of sheltering Catholic priests on the run, she refused to plead guilty or not guilty. She declared that she had committed no crime and she would not plead not guilty because if she did, the prosecution planned to put her children in the witness box to subject them to cross-questioning. As a mother, she would not allow her children to feel later that they had caused our mother, their mother's death. Now, that's a lesson in self-renunciation, and that's the core of today's Gospel. And today is her feast day. 
Now last Sunday, if you remember rightly, Peter was on the crest of a wave when Jesus made him head of the church, but today he's gone from hero to zero. He tries to turn Jesus away from the self-renunciation of the cross, and so he is compared to Satan. If Jesus had turned away from the cross, then Satan would have won the day, because it was through his self-sacrifice that he has atoned for our sins and achieved the salvation of the world. The great journey which we are all asked to make in life is that which takes us away from self-absorption towards self-renunciation. And the unique irony about Christianity is that in order for me to save my life, for eternity that is, I must lose it. But who wants to do precisely that? Now if we turn a deaf ear to the message of today's Gospel, self-indulgence might take over from self renunciation. And there's a lot of self-indulgence round these days. Saint Paul in the second reading today warns us not to model ourselves on the behaviour of the world round us, but let our behaviour change, modelled by our new mind. I saw a disturbing programme on the telly some time ago about bur burdening and confusing young children with gender theories in primary schools, which Pope Francis says is destructive of children. It sounds like God made a mistake in fashioning us as male and female, and we need to correct his error. That equates to renouncing God in place of renouncing ourselves. In order to take up our cross every day and follow Jesus, mentioned in today's Gospel, we need to earnestly ask the Holy Spirit to pour this self-sacrificing love into our hearts. Now, we're not talking here about becoming a doormat for everyone or allowing ourselves to be continually taken for granted. But keeping ourselves to ourselves doesn't sound like self-renunciation self either. Watching from the sidelines, as it were, and as Catholic Christians, not getting involved in issues which the Church sees as important, is another form of self-absorption. I know that the present pandemic is not a good thing in itself, but it has brought out the best in people by getting them involved in helping their neighbours in need. Another form of self-renunciation is when we stand up for Christian values which may put our preconceived ways of thinking and acting on their head. Saint Martin Clitheroe could easily have saved her skin if she didn't harbour Catholic priests on the run. She was actually given every enticement to do so, but she stood firm to the end. Self-renunciation, then, should be our abiding witness. Without it, our Christianity would be a charade, and the surest way to make it redundant. But we are reassured by our Lord's own words when he says, anyone who loses his life for my sake will keep it for eternal life.
We place our needs now before the Father. Let us pray that our local church people may be characterized by their spirit of renunciation in line with the gospel today. May it be our abiding Christian witness. Lord, hear us. We pray for the courage to shoulder the crosses which may come our way in life. Carrying them in union with Jesus may, may make our burdens lighter. Lord, hear us. As the season of creation begins this Tuesday, the 1st of September, may the prayers of the faithful help bring about change in the minds and hearts of all, especially those who govern us, especially those who govern the more powerful nations of the world. Lord, hear us. Let's pray for an end to racial tension in America. May the people involved turn their backs on violence and work for the common good. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, especially those included in our bulletin. May they never feel alone or dejected. Lord, hear us. We pray for the dead, especially those who died recently, those who died from the coronavirus, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the coming week. May they inherit eternal life. Lord, hear us. Let us now pray to Mary, a model of self-sacrifice. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let us pause and pray for a special need of our own. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of your name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, as with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring our fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus 
taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. Renew by the bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.